Hi and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to look at medlars. Uh, this is a medlar tree I planted about six years ago now. Uh, it's a bit of an ugly little contorted tree. There, I've seen some that look rather beautiful but this one sadly doesn't. But it is producing medlars. These weird fruits, it's, they're relatives of apples and pears and so on. Uh, rose family. The French call them col de chien, which means dog's arse. Um, I can't for the life of me think why they would call them that. Um, anyway, they're, they're rather unusual. Um, to, to use them for eating, you first have to blet them, um, which probably most people have never heard of. Neither had I until I looked them up. Um, which means basically you pick them and then you leave them to go almost rotten. Uh, when that happens, we're going to have a go at making some uh, medlar cheese and medlar jelly, which I've never tried uh, and I'm quite intrigued to find out whether it's any good. Anyway, first I've got to pick the medlars. There we go, look at these whole lovely trunk full of gorgeous medlars. They're really actually rather beautiful in a slightly bottom-like kind of way, aren't they? Right, so the next step is we stick these in a brown paper bag indoors until they go soft, till they bled. Now this one's already gone, so let me just show you. So basically you're waiting for them to go <laughs> essentially rotten, um, at which point you can just eat them straight off the tree. And they're kind of sweet, rather odd tasting. I'm hoping the cheese is better than the raw fruit. Anyway, right, so off to the kitchen. Hello and welcome back. So, these are the medlars we picked it's nearly three weeks ago now and they've all gone nice and soft. So look, they were rock hard before, whereas now they're kind of rotten, which is supposedly how we want them. So they've bletted, which is a word which, as far as I'm aware, is only used for basically the rotting of meddlers. So we now have to squish them all up. So I'm going to chuck them in. It's about um, three kilos, I reckon. I don't know if they're all going to fit. Uh, that'll do. And then we chuck on about a litre of cold water. And then we squish them all up, uh, which should be lovely. Uh, so the idea is we're trying to separate. Medlars are full of seeds and skin and bits that really won't be very nice in this delicious medlar cheese we're making. So we need to first of all smash them as best we can, which is going to take me a few minutes with this potato masher. Yummy. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, it looks like all sorts of things. Most of them things you probably wouldn't want to eat. But uh, we'll keep going until they're all smashed and then we're going to stick it on the stove for 20 minutes and warm it all up to help soften them even more. All right, that should do for the moment. Right. Get it on the stove. And bring this to a gentle boil um, and soften everything up. Stew it for about 20 minutes and then we'll try and separate out the pips. So, this has been bubbling away and hopefully it's all kind of softened up. So the next stage is to try and separate out all the pips and skin, which we don't want to throw them away, and the extra juice that you can use for making a medlar jelly if you're keen. Um, but, but what we're after is the, is the pulp. So I'm just putting this um, muslin cheesecloth 
over a bowl, and then a colander on top. This seems a bit complicated, but hopefully it'll work. And then... So then, the idea is you basically push it through, push it through the colander. So what should slowly happen? This is going to take a while, obviously. But look at this: the stuff that's coming out the bottom is the is the puree we're after. Lovely. Oh, it actually starts to look slightly appetising at this point. It smells interesting too, it's slightly weird. So, there we have it. It takes quite a while actually pushing all this through and just, I'm sure if I spent longer I could get more of this out. But this is the, this is all the pips and seeds and underneath we've got the delicious brown sludge that we're going to use to make medley cheese. I'll just put as much of that off as I can. Okay, so now we just need to basically get some of the liquid out of this. So what we need to do is hang it up to drain. See, I was never a scout. I'd be better at tying knots if I was. Okay. So hopefully we'll just leave this to drip. Oh, look at that! <laughs> so hopefully this is kind of drained. We've got a whole load of sticky sweet um, juice in here, which you can use to make medley jelly but what we're going to do today is use this puree mm, interesting to um to make the cheese so just gonna want to wrap it Beautiful. What could be more appetizing than that? So we need to wait until so I've zeroed that. 850 grams. So we need to have, add half the weight again of sugar. So um, 425 grams. The gin, the all important gin. This is an essential aid for making medley cheese. <laughs> what did I say? 425. You're putting me off now. Mm -hmm. uh, nearly there. You clearly haven't drunk enough gin. I'm working on it. Okay, this now we have to heat on a pan and dissolve the sugar. I've never done this before, so it does seem to me like. It's quite a solid mixture and it's more likely to burn than dissolve the sugar, but we'll see. Ooh, come and have a look, this is kind of interesting. Other ingredients actually before I finish mixing. We need a pinch of salt, 
and I'm gonna just add the zest. Zest, do I mean the zest, the peel? That's what I mean. Oh, a satsuma. It's supposed to be an orange, but I didn't have an orange, so it'll have to be a satsuma. Don't taste much different, I'm sure. And then, once I've done this, finally, Vanilla. I guess you can use any type of vanilla you like, but this is vanilla bean paste, which is supposed to be pretty good. Uh, so I'm just going to get a little bit of that, kind of a quarter of a teaspoon, I guess. Vicky. And stir it all up. So, this has been bubbling away and it's kind of thickened up a bit. Looks delightful. I don't know what it reminds me of actually, but I'm sure it'll be delicious. So now it just remains to put it in, in molds. So these are silicon molds. Um, I've lined them with a little bit of oil just to stop it sticking because I suspect this gloopy mix might stick. And now we've just got to get it in the mould without dribbling it everywhere. Bit more. Beautiful. Waste any. There we go. Beautiful little pats. It's not really that beautiful. <laughs> not at all like cow pats. Yeah, marvelous. So now um, they just need to cool and set overnight and tomorrow um, they'll be ready to try. How exciting is that? <laughs> so well, it's now 24 hours later and uh, these have hopefully set so we now just got to turn them out onto a cake rack and dry them uh, a little bit more. I'm hoping this doesn't go horribly wrong. We'll soon see. Fantastic sort of splats. So welcome back to the uh, the tasting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you like the decoration. A bit of bit of gold spray as it's very nearly Christmas. So these are my devil's dumplings. <laughs> Medler cheese. Uh, so you're supposed to have it with cheese. So let's just. Try. We've got some homemade bread, which is a rare thing around here. Really? But let's have a nibble. Mmm. 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 Try it. What do you reckon? Not bad. Mmm. It's surprisingly it good. I wasn't. I wasn't in to, entirely sure what this was going to be like. It's a bit. Um, it's like it's like figgy, like yeah. something like dates or figs or some hybrid between dates. the two. It's really nice. Dates, I think, not bad at all. Hmm. No, yeah, you don't really need the cheese, but it's good with cheese. A triumph. There you go. Medal of cheese, give it a go. So you need to grow a medal of tree first. It might take you a while, but good luck. <laughs> Thank you. 
if you'd like to know more about bumblebees and other pollinators and the wonderful world of insects in general, uh, or about how to uh, make your garden more wildlife friendly, then you might enjoy one of my books available at all the usual places. Thank you.